Welcome back, everybody. It's your boy, Black and Crusader here. And we're coming back for another episode. Altcoins in the crypto market are pumping today. But why? Why are why are they pumping today? We're going to be getting into all that. Make sure you stay tuned. Make sure you smash the likes. Get involved. Guys, let's jump right into the crypto market right now and see what is going on here. So, as you can see here, we've got Bitcoin up 5.7% today. Ethereum, 7.9%. We're pumping, guys. We're, we're moving, right? Yesterday, we saw some massive movement downward and then a quick recovery after the CPI numbers came out yesterday. And today, the altcoins are feeling it and they're moving. XRP up 5.7%. BNB, I mean, everything has been moving up 5, 6%, 8%, 10%. It's been nice. It's a nice, different feeling to actually see the market somewhat moving to the upside, right? We're also reaching the one year anniversary of the top of the market. So we're, we've almost been in this bear market for 365 days. There's, you know, there, you know, so far about a year long or so. So give or take, we could be reaching the bottom here. Could the bear market extend a little bit longer? Possibly. But like I said before, we're definitely a lot closer to the bottom than, than anyone can think of. And you just never know. So markets are moving up. That's a good feeling. That's a well welcomed feeling, nonetheless. I mean, let's see who the top 24 hour gainer is. Uh, ENS up 13.1% today. Quant up 7.5%. Guys, cryptos are moving and it's good. Awesome. Guys, if you're not following me on Twitter just yet, make sure you go follow me on Twitter. Make sure you get involved with Danger Close Software. That's what this piece of art here is the DCA versus the fold. If you don't know what I'm talking about, make sure you check the link down below and join the Discord. Debate Crypto. If you're not following Debate Crypto, I don't know what you're doing, right? 7.30 every day Eastern Time. We are going live, bringing you some crazy information over there. Crypto Keeper and myself run that show. So make sure you're checking out Debate Crypto. So guys, let's move on. Don't worry about the faction wars or the naked medic gang. Let's move on to Bitcoin. Let's move on to what is going on here. So Bitcoin could outpace the stock market back to the 2017 ratio. And here is why. Guys, I've told you that the crypto markets were going to pump a lot faster and recover a lot faster than the stock market. That's just that's just given. That's happened historically before when we saw the whole fog around the world take place and everything dropped massively. By May, June, crypto is already on the move on the way up big time. Compared to the stock market, the stock market took almost a whole year later to start even seeing some level of recovery. I mean, so if, you, if you're doubting crypto, you seriously have not been paying attention to what's going on. But let's go into it. The times are rough, right? Cryptocurrency sector as a whole, including the largest asset by market capitalization, Bitcoin, has been struggling to hold support on 19000 We know this. Nothing here is new. But according to Kaleo's explanation not only does bitcoin look solid versus usd it's on the verge of breaking above a key resistance in the lower accumulation range it's been stuck for the past four months the crypto analyst emphasized that this means that the decentralized finance asset presents activity that should be given a clear shot to outpace the spx back to the 2017 ratio all-time high and higher so nonetheless if you're betting against stocks versus crypto, crypto will probably be the best way to go, right? That's where the volatility is. That is where the big money is going. That is where you can make life-changing money. You're, honestly, you're just not going to make life-changing money in the stock market. You can make some nice gains here and there. All right, you saw GameStop or whatever, but naturally, you're not going to make life-changing money in the stock market. It's just too slow. The movements don't happen like they happen in crypto. So, you know, you do what you want. Obviously, never financial advice here. Let's move on to the next article. We're going to be talking about Bitcoin whales, right? Bitcoin whale enters a long position after the CPI release, which is probably one of the reasons why we're seeing a massive move today. Let's get into it. So we know yesterday the price tanked to 18300 thousand, right? After Bitcoin, after the CPI report came out and Bitcoin tanked down below 19, it went all the way to 18.3. It was expected to have like 8.1% uh, inflation and we have like at 8.2. That is obviously a big deal in the traditional system and things went down. So Bitcoin price soars. Whales are accumulating. Let's, let's cover it. 
Bitcoin's price recovered in correlation to the U.S. stock market on Thursday, hours after the higher-than-expected CPI data was released. But although CPI for September comes in lower than July and August, the core CPI rises to a 40-year high, guys. You heard that right, 40-year high. We are still have massive levels of inflation, no matter how much the narrative wants to tell you otherwise. Interestingly, a Bitcoin whale entered long positions on the Binance and BitMEX futures exchanges as the Bitcoin price fell to 18.3K. The move is expected to have come as a result of the U.S. Energy Information Administration reporting a significant increase in crude oil inventories. Very interesting here. Very interesting talking about taking into consideration the oil energy problem that we've been, that we've been having around the world. And that is their decision to get into Bitcoin. So let's look a little bit here, right? The broader crypto market rebounded due to the gains in the Bitcoin, right? Bitcoin goes up, the rest of the altcoins move up with it. So however, it is not a spot purchase that could have strengthened Bitcoin bulls. Nevertheless, the Bitcoin whales purchase is enough to bring an additional rebound in the short term, at least until profits in the futures market. So, you know, it's not what we wanted, what we expected, but we're getting something, right? We're getting some level of movement upward. And then we go into here, has Bitcoin bottomed out? Has it not? Like I said earlier, we are reaching the one year mark of being the, of, from the top of the bull market. Therefore, meaning we have technically been in a bear market for almost 365 days. That is a huge indicator, right? Time frames, the four year cycles, all of that comes into play. Four-year cycle has not been broken just yet, no matter how much other people were saying it was earlier last year. So could we be at the bottom? I've made a video on five indicators showing that Bitcoin's price is primed to make an explosive move. But nonetheless, it hasn't happened just yet. There's tons of indicators, tons of things that you guys can look at out there that could be telling you, hey, we are ready to move. We are ready to pump. And maybe they are, but it hasn't happened just yet. So, you know, keep that in mind. This is never financial advice. It's not to tell you, hey, go out there and buy some Bitcoin right now because that's not the right thing to tell you. I'm not here to give you financial advice. I'm just here to report the news and give you my opinions on what's happening in the news. So let's keep going back to the rest of the other articles. We got Ethereum coming up. So Ethereum. Hmm. Decentralized exchange. Uniswap raises 165 million in new funding. What have I been talking about, guys? What have I been talking about? I've been talking about how they keep scaring you out of the crypto market. They keep telling you it's too dangerous. They keep telling you don't get involved. They keep telling you it's not safe. But nonetheless, we keep seeing more capital flying into the into the market. We see BlackRock, Google, BNY, Mellon getting involved. We see all these big money getting involved with crypto and starting to build out more infrastructure and build out positions of power. This one, I'm actually a big supporter of decentralized exchanges. There's a lot of things going on out there with a bit license and getting involved with centralized exchanges, making kind of decentralized exchanges kind of illegal. If that, if every single, ex if regulation comes out claiming that every single, uh, Crypto exchange requires a license. Obviously, a decentralized exchange would not be able to get one of those, therefore making them illegal. So that I'm not a supporter of, but I am a supporter of the fact that there is capital money coming into these decentralized exchanges because I 100% believe we need more of this. So let's jump into it. The crypto bear market may have scared off retail investors, of course, right? Everybody's panic selling, but nonetheless, Capitalists are, you know, they're funding DeFi projects. Uniswap announced that it has raised $165 million today, led by Polychain Capital. Joining Polychain Capital in the Series B funding round are A16Z Crypto, Paradigm, SV Angel, and Variant. I'm so excited to announce that we have raised $165 million, yada, yada, yada. Point of the article is they're raising money. Capitalists are investing into decentralized exchanges, which is not just good for the crypto market in general, saying, hey, big money is still here. They still believe in this technology, but they're believing in decentralization, which is massive. That is a hyper-focus that people need to, to work on. Decentralization, not just centralized entities and like Coinbase and whatever, 
we need more decentralized exchanges it's just it's for your own like the government tells you it's for your own safety guys you need decentralization more centralization less power in your hands up next bnb burning some tokens is that good for your bnb price is your bnb bags gonna pump because binance is burning let's check it out so the burn removed over 2 million bnb from the circulating supply you can see right here bnb is on fire binance today completed its 21st quarterly burn of bnb tokens effectively compensating for the losses incurred from its bridge hack last week we all heard about that already bnb is the native currency on the bnb chain if you didn't know also known as the binance smart chain it's a competitor to ethereum yada 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 a burn is when tokens are permanently removed from the cryptocurrency supply which is good right less supply same or greater demand price increase the supply and demand 101 this is generally used as a measure against inflation. Today's burn took 2 million and whatever over worth over $549 million at current prices off the market. By comparison, an exploit of the BNB chain uh, last week netted the attacker exactly 2 million tokens. So conjured out, th out of thin air using artificial withdrawal proof, the net value of the stolen BNB was worth roughly 566 million. So they basically burned in almost an equivalent amount of how much was stolen since they had just produced 566 million out of nowhere. That's not good for token metrics, right? For tokenomics and for the circulation and value of the coin. So they burned it. But they're doing this quarterly. So this burn was not just because of the hack. The majority of those coins were lost to the hacker when the BSG chain froze the network, yada, yada. So the question here is BNB. Are they going to keep pumping? Is BNB, you know, a solid coin to be holding? Obviously, like I said, never financial advice. But in my opinion, Binance is one of the largest, if not the largest exchange out there. They've been around some of the longest time compared to all the other exchanges we have nowadays. And they have, in my opinion, have proven to me they're not going anywhere. They will continue to, th to thrive and they will continue to, you know, just be a massive competitor in the space. So I think betting against BNB is not a smart move. I think BNB will continuously comp out compete and outwork some of these other exchanges out there. And they, they've been proving themselves for a long time. So BNB, uh, let's, let's talk a little bit more about the burns here. So BNB trades at its exchange, but have since changed uh, the formula of the auto burn model. The formula calculates how much BNB to burn based on the number of BNB chain blocks during the quarter and the price of BNB. In general, the higher the price of the coin at a given time, the more BNB will be burned each quarter. Binance's previous burn in July saw 1.96 million tokens burned, worth 444 million at the time. Binance is also helping burn Luna Classic tokens. Yeesh, that one is still burning some people, let me tell you. Using roughly the same approach as its previously quarterly burned model. It takes fees co collected from Luna C trades and uses them to buy back token from the market. Binance's periodic burns will cease taking place once the Binance supply uh, or BNB supply reaches fewer than a hundred million tokens, less than 50% of the token supply from the time it first launched. I think that's massive. I think the massive reduction in supply, obviously we're seeing a lot of things being built on the Binance smart chain and they will continue to be growing in value over time. That's just my opinion. Like I said, never ever financial advice. But guys, to wrap it up here, from left field, we've got NFTs, right? You guys know we got Danger Close Alpha, massive NFT project with real life utility going on. But CoinShares has created a Twitter bot that gives traders fair prices for Ethereum NFTs. What? You're gonna be negotiating with an AI for a fair price on your NFT. Is this going to be the new standard, right? Because we know people in the NFT space will sell any NFT for a ridiculous amount of ETH. And you're like, man, I would really want to purchase it, but this is a ridiculous ask. 
and you can put you can put bids in or whatever but now that we're getting ai to say hey you might be asking for a thousand eth here but in reality that's not nowhere near worth that nft i think a more fair price would be this will this bot be able to actually help people negotiate better prices and actually sell more nfts let's get into it so what to know how much board ape is really worth here's one way to find out crypto asset investments and trading group coinshares has launched an experimental twitter bot coinshares nft ai that can calculate a fair price for a given nft nfts unique blockchain tokens that significant that signify ownership yada yada is you know i'm not going to explain to you what an nft is you should know if you don't know you will know so the twitter bot aggregates data and tells users at what price is a, a specific nft could be bought or sold for like i said price negotiation if this bot does play out well i think a lot more deals will be able to be made on nft purchases a simple tweet can let you know how much an nft might be worth coinshares tweeted thursday we are very excited and proud to announce the official launch of coinshares nft ai yada yada the firm told decrypt via email that it created the nft pricing bot because its research team wanted to provide a tool to help nft investors and traders exactly it's gonna help them make better deals and be able to keep nfts flowing and flipping a lot quicker if you can broker a better deal versus just two random people saying i want this price and the other person saying no i want to i want this other price right when you buy cars you have kelly's blue book right you have a reference to say hey this is a fair value for this car at this time with its with its specs same thing here they're building the kelly blue book of nfts that will reference you a fair price for your nft this is massive guys for the nft selling uh market to evaluate the hype of a specific collection we can count its followers on social media platforms as well as the volume and the value of past transactions coin shares told decrypt while it might look while this might seem like a great idea with a clear use case the bot isn't exactly timely with replies so he's, he's kind of lazy universally applicable upon testing the coin shares bot took three minutes to reply and told me and told me the nft i wanted to find a fair price for was not available so obviously the bot is still in development it's like a prototype right it's not out there in full-on production they are testing out people working with the bot and how the bot reacts but we know where ai is going we know what these bots are capable of the fact that they're already introducing this a kelly blue book of nft to you know negotiate fair value is huge guys so currently the bot only supports about pricing data for 50 nft collections some collections are so-called blue chips or higher priced nfts like doodles clonex board ape club and you know the moonbirds so guys in my opinion i think this is massive i think this is huge i honestly think that this is huge this, like i said the kelly blue book of nfts is being produced right here right now and that is huge for when you go buy a car you always value your cars and your purchases and what they're asking for versus the the blue book to make sure you're not getting ripped off to make sure you're making a good financial decision this is going to help broker so many more deals be able to sell so many more nfts stop the nft price inflation and have some serious deals some serious flipping that's just my opinion i want to hear your guys opinion do you think this is actually going to change the nft space yes no maybe so bitcoin pumping are we closer to the bottom now than ever are we getting primed and ready to start pumping obviously if bitcoin pumps the altcoins are going to pump let me know down below guys till next time like always make sure you keep on fighting the good blockchain fight the blockchain crusades will continue we will continue to bring here more facts more freedom that's the only way to do it in the crypto space see ya